but basically they're at zero uh, all of them and when you step the idle up they start climbing cylinder number one you see there I don't know if you can see there or not but uh, misfires the thing sounds smooth as you know glass I mean and cylinder number six has the most so I also got uh, some pits pulled up for history yeah, cylinder number one is just 23,800 since the last time it was cleared. Uh, cylinder number two, there's only, there's not, you know, so it's just cylinder number one and cylinder number six are the worst. Hey, John here again. So listen, this is a 2002 GMC Sierra with a uh, six liter engine in it. Hold on, I can close this door. Um, So, so the uh, the truck has this uh, annoying engine light on it. Hold on. It's a 300 code, right? I'm on my way to. Uh, all right, let me give you a quick story. I'm on my way to a, uh, a mechanic that is local to me. I don't know who he is. I've never seen him. First of all, I do my, all my own work. You know, on my cars. I'm 52 years old since I was whatever. Whenever you get your first car, always worked on his stuff. So, I have a scan tool that. Uh, has the ability to read and, and uh, look at um, things like uh, you know the cylinder misfire counter but it doesn't have the ability to do a crankshaft relearn I'm just throwing it out there because of where I'm going so this 300 code pops up in your engine light let me start this up that engine light that popped up in the corner there you're going down the road it'll just start blinking for no reason now that when you look the code up it's a 3P03 Zero, zero, uh, 300 and it's a random misfire cord. Of course you probably know that but uh, So there's no rhyme or reason why this happens. I'll give you a quick story. This is uh, I'm the second owner on this tr uh, Truck so it's 90,000 on it. Uh, my friend bought it brand new around 30,000 this this code came up and uh, I didn't know it at the time but uh, so the only way to get this rectified was to take it to somebody with a scan tool that can do a crankshaft relearn procedure again I didn't know this at the time so about 60,000 miles because I bought it with 50,000 miles about 60,000 miles this uh, flashing light came up of course it freaks you out and you know and then you look it up and you're like random misfire I think sounds like it's running great so you take it home as a do-it-yourself you know backyard mechanic uh, you start going through things right but you don't hear any misfires of course you know what a misfire is you can plug a coil that's a misfire right but this thing's running great it doesn't have a misfire but you still you're like because if there's I don't know a kajillion things that could cause this 300 code uh, mostly what fuel, uh, you know it's either fuel or, or something with your spark you know ignition wire or plugs or or something like that usually you know but um, anyways I know that what this problem is so I take it to uh, well first I call my friend hey you ever experienced this he tells me about this 300 code you got to crank shaft right there so I take it to Chevy at 60,000 miles I tell him this story, my friend, blah, blah, blah. I get the truck back, this is a few years ago, and uh, everything's fine. So here it is, 90,000 miles. I don't know why it's like every 30,000 miles, but and no one has a reason why this comes up, but uh, so it came up again. So I take it back to Chevy. Now I'm gonna take half the blame here. Um, I gotta get going. Uh, but so maybe this will pop up on the way uh, so I can show you, but so right around 2400, uh, 2400 RPMs it comes up, but. I don't think I'm going to be going that fast because I'm going local here. But so, anyways, the the uh, the Chevy guy, of course, this is a couple years later. Um, he he says uh, he can't do the procedure because there's a um, a stored code of 174, and, and I'm like, what? No, it didn't make sense to me. So I'm like, all right. So like I said, as a do-it-yourself backyard mechanic, I go back to the house, figure out that you know I smoked the engine. It was a uh, EGR tube had a hole in it, so it's sucking on metered air. And I get that fixed. I'm trying to make this quick video uh, without boring you, so I take it back. First of all, they charge me, even though they didn't do the procedure. They charge me 125 bucks. Shit, I just went the wrong way. Um, charge me 125 bucks, and uh, lo and behold, you, you know, I, I went home, got got the EGR hooked up, everything cleared the code, wrote it for two weeks, everything was good, and then uh, so I take it back to them to get this procedure done and they do it another 125 bucks I gotta turn around 
and uh, man, screw it, I'll go this way, go the long way. So, the, uh, the uh, long story short, it, it didn't get fixed. This will probably come back on the way over. So, I don't like to take it anywhere, especially to <laughs> Chevy dealer, and they charged me, uh, so I'm out 250 bucks, they didn't fix it. And they know nothing about this. So, another week goes by, I call, I, again, I don't know who this guy is, I've never been there, I haven't even seen the place, but, um, I call him, I say, hey, do you, this is my question, do you have a scan tool that can do a relearn procedure? Because i got a scan tool, but it, just, you know, it doesn't have the ability for bi-directional controls or any of that. So, so he says, yeah, what do you got, a GM? That's what he says. I'm like, yeah. Oof, man, he's panels. He goes, I go, yeah. He goes, let me guess, a flashing light? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So this guy, I didn't even give him any information. And uh, he knows what it is. So hopefully he's going to do this crankshaft relearn procedure and everything's going to be hunky dory now my problem with chevy is i'm again i was going to tell you i might be halfway uh responsible for for not having them doing uh, the right procedure because i asked them to do a uh i said i think my uh pcm needs another relearn procedure i threw that out there i did say pcm but so that's probably what they did but for for me thinking it's a chevy dealer they, they should know this. This this fellow I called up is a private dealer, and I don't know how good or bad he is, but he's so local that i got to go there. Um, so he threw it right out. He knew it right away. And this is a 2002. It's 2019. So, I, yeah, I get it that Chevy's probably not worked on these in a while. Most of them are in a crusher, but this truck has still got you know, relatively low miles, but no rust, and I'm going to keep it till it dies. So, you know, Chevy, they didn't know about it, whatever. So this guy knew about it, so I'm going to get down here see if this uh, works let me take this up to 2400 500 whatever see if that light will come on of course it ain't coming on now great um but anyways uh trust me it comes on it, and and especially when you get on the interstate it does come on and uh it'll eventually go off it blinks for whatever you know 10 15 times uh but i can't get it inspected in in the state of Massachusetts with this uh, underlying code, the 300 code. So I do have to get it fixed. And uh, again, there's nothing wrong with a vehicle. So if you're one of those guys that start throwing parts at it like I originally did, you know, spark plugs, wires, you know, then you're thinking, oh, that didn't work. What next? Maybe fuel injectors. You go down the whole list of things, you're going to be out a lot of money. When this vintage truck, all you have to do is have somebody with the ability to do a crankshaft breather. So let me get down to this place. I, I don't know if he wants me to film this place. So, uh, I'm going to shut the camera off for a bit, and I'll ask him if he wants me to film. But uh, so, and uh, see if this does the ticket. Actually, I got, I got to, I got to make sure this thing does it j just for proof. So I'm going to pull over here and uh, try to get this uh, thing up to. Uh, it might have to get up to temperature. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why it's not coming on now. It comes on every other day, but uh, it does come on. I mean, stomp on a little bit. Usually around 2,400 RPMs, 2,500 RPMs. Well, whatever. Trust me, I just got back from New York, so I know it's on. I was just on yesterday. It keeps coming back on. Maybe it just needs to be warmed up. So I'm going to get down here. I'm going to do this crankshaft relearn. The reason I'm posting this is because you might be just throwing money at it. Money, 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 and nothing's fixing this thing. It's all it is, and i, I got to ask this guy why this is happening. And it seems like every 30,000 miles, which is really strange. Almost like uh, the GM uh, engineer threw a little... <laughs> You know, hey, let's mess with people. No, that can't be what happened. But anyway, oh, oh I thought it just came on. No, let me, uh, I gotta shut this off because I'm almost here. All right, I'm at a red light and it is flashing just to show you. So, um, oh, focus, baby. Why isn't this focusing? Uh, so it's affordable. We'll see what happens. I can't see it. Affordable, uh, Allen affordable something or other. I don't know. But it look, probably looks like an old school garage, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So we'll see what happens. All right. I don't know if this is looking at because I'm trying to drive here. I just got out of there. It literally took this guy seven minutes. Literally seven minutes. Uh, 40 bucks to do this procedure. I just spent $250 at Chevy to do what I thought was this procedure <laughs> and it didn't do the trick I don't know if it did the trick yet but I'm uh, driving home it came on when I was driving here and uh, I'm gonna have to find a better highway I can't do it here but uh, 
I, it, it comes on every stinking time. You get it up to around 65. All right, so I'm just getting back to um, my, um, my house. I took it up on a highway, nothing. No engine light. Uh, this issue is resolved. You have to find an old school mechanic, charge you 40 bucks or whatever, you know, the price is in your area, and you're golden. Now, you know, I don't ever take my stuff to Chevy, but it was the only place, you know, that, that I thought would be able to do this. And I'm out 250 bucks from Chevy, and they didn't even, do, do, again, I don't discount that they did a procedure. <laughs> it's just the wrong one. Why didn't they know about this? Uh, I'm assuming this is a 2002. They they probably haven't worked on one of these, or maybe the guy's too young. I don't know the mechanic, rather, you know, and he's never heard of this. Um, this old school dude knew exactly what it was. Seven minutes later, I'm good to go. Can't even believe it. Wish I took it there to begin with, but I do everything myself, so didn't even know he existed. But he does have a customer for life. If I run into a pickle again, definitely going there. But that's all I got. I, I do. Uh, I should bash uh, GM, uh, but anyways, if you have the flashing yellow and you don't have a skip, chances are if your vehicle's between 2002 and I don't even know what years they made these, but maybe 2006, I think somebody said once, uh, you know, and you got this flashing light at highway speeds, it, it, it's, it's what it is, and it's an easy fix, come on, jeez. Anyways, thanks for watching.